Good morning, fellas. Welcome to the vlog. Hello. How are you? Saturday morning. Saturday morning. I've come in because I'm looking after the kids tonight. And oh my, I'll just go crazy if I have to spend 24 hours at home. So, obligatory trip into work. And it's a good job that I did really. So I've come in this morning and after I'd had all the fermenters out, after we painted the floor, I realised I'd not reopened all the disconnect valves on the back, so the temperatures were climbing a little bit and they were into the 20, 21 degrees C. So I opened all the valves up, inspected them, and all but one was opening, which was, well, not this valve. This is a, a brand new valve body. Let's get in here a little bit. So this is what I use for the motorised valves. We are slowly but surely upgrading to these ones which are much easier to interchange by just undoing this nut and we can change the body if the electronics fail because these brass valves will last for decades. So the trouble is these are three wire so it takes just a little bit of fiddling on the electrics but it's not a problem it really is just an extra cable needs bringing out. So what happens with these electronic uh, valves is this attaches I don't want to tip this upside down because I've got it apart this attaches to the back of this valve body here and it's got a little cam on the back that goes into a slot corresponding slot on the back of this motorised unit and when the polarity because these are two wire is switched on these two wires the motor goes either forwards or backwards depending on how you've set it up oops I've dropped the screws <laughs> either opening this is going in the bin by the way either opening or closing the valve the difference with the three wire ones is you have a permanent negative and on the other two wires the positive feed switches from one wire to the next pushing it backwards and forwards so anyway this was sluggish and slow and not working as it should be so I've popped the back off for reference these are called CR01 motorised valves they're about 20 well depending on where you buy them from between 15 and 20 quid on eBay you can get them cheaper but you may have quite a wait for them to come across so after taking the back off there is this little cover pad which holds the top of all the cogs and wheels in there and then you've got this little circuit board which screws onto the top here anyway when I took it off there was a few drops of moisture on the circuit board and also when I took it apart there were two screws missing oh look at that wire that's just come straight off with a little bit of persuasion that was probably the problem so yeah there had been moisture ingress because all the screws weren't there and upon further investigation I think the circuit board is okay that looks fine to me I could save it but you know these are just kind of jelly bean parts or swap them out so I thought I'd investigate a little bit further and I'm popping off the top we can see the inner workings of the valve and it's full of planetary, well they're not planetary gears they're radial gears and uh, what happens is when power comes in and there's a change of state there's a little 12 volt motor in here and he spins around like Billio he must do like a thousand rotations to one rotation of this main uh, brass gear and then this brass gear is coupled to you can just see the back edge of the um, cam so that's coupled to that and that turns as well so yeah I'm not sure what the gear ratio is on this but I can tell you now I've got an itchy eye there I can tell you now it's very very high 
So I thought, well, I'll pull the camera out whilst I'm exploring this and we'll dig further into it because it's going in the bin. So I'm just going to change the camera angle and we'll get down on the bench and we'll have a bit of a look-see. Hopefully that's a little bit easier for us to all see. I'm not going to lock the exposure on this or the, uh, the focus because I'm going to keep bringing stuff up to have a look closer at the camera. So I want to pop off all of these little gears. So we'll take this middle one out, that looks like it's going to give up fairly easily. And this one, so some of these have little brass inserts on them, there we go, look. So these are where the rubber is meeting the road effectively. And I think most of the power translation or the resistance, the inertia is being applied. That's just fell straight off of its cam, off of its uh, axle, should I say. So yeah, all these little gears are just made out of nylon by the looks of it. And there are several of them, and once you've taken them off, I would imagine you really, really struggle to put them all back together. That doesn't want to move. Can we get this main one off? Aha! Oh, so the whole pin assembly, the carrier, is coming out. Oh, and there we have the motor. As you can see, it's well corroded. I'm thinking that that has had a bit of a tough time over the past few years and that's simply the moisture ingress which has caused that to deteriorate and I imagine that's why it's sluggish at, um, it feels really easy to turn but I bet you there's a little bit of resistance there then underneath it looks like we've got what appears to be a stainless steel which would be surprising um, cog there gear with a retaining circlet and then inside this is the carrier arm which swings from back to forth rotating sorry framing rotating the main cam and it's designed in such a way that it's got these two micro switches either side and when they are reached it breaks the circuit so we can see we've got probably the negative feed going through that one and then the positive feed going through that one as to where one of those has broken off and then depending on which way which side is positive at the time or negative at the time this is simply breaking the circuit when it reaches its limit so we don't continue to spin that cam round and round and uh, well just keep going doing a 360 pointless that's all there is to it simple elegant design not sure what's on here these are quite tiny little circuit boards and We've got a little resistor there, and these, I imagine, might be some type of diode, just to prevent uh, leakage current going the wrong way. I'm not sure. Somebody out there will know. I don't. There is a number on them, but I can't quite read it. You might see it better. But yeah, there's a little number on there. You might be able to read that. I can't read it. My eyes aren't good enough. Uh, one four seven M seven. I don't know. Anyway, by the by, so parts that we could harvest out of here, possibly the micro switches, if you had another project for them. But other than that, and the, the little motor, if it wasn't so knackered. Other than that, the only thing that's really worth salvaging is the brass fitting. This is fine, although I can't think of an application where I can utilize these without having to buy another body so it might have to just go into my little scrap bucket for probably just weighing in and just like that so all that can just be dumped and 
apart from having a little bit of a tidy up. That's me done in the workshop, I think. I could tidy the floor, but you know, I really can't be bothered. What I am going to do though, while I'm here for a couple of hours, I'm going to mix up some more resin, because we've got some more resin. This camera's all over the shop, isn't it? We've got some more resin, and I'm going to go around the brewery, and where we've got all the cracks and dimples and holes, I'm just going to do a little bit at a time, and pour, I'm going to pour some of the resin in there, see if we can't seal these little holes up, and then eventually we'll put one last top coat on with some anti-slip in there, and it'll be done. But I think doing this little touch-up bit, I'm going to extend this period for maybe a few months because I'm sure over that time we're going to have other patches of the floor that's going to open up and uh, deteriorate so we can specifically target those as well but we've got to give them time to emerge first of course so I'm going to tackle the ones that I'm, I'm aware of now and uh, we'll wait for the others to appear before we top coat it. So I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera but I've done two pop noodle tubs full of resin just to fill the little divots and gaps and holes and then I peeled up a few pieces, these few bits at the side of the drain the, uh, the cement was still a bit wet so it's not stuck to it but again easy repairs, this is so much better than paint, the resin it's just you put a little bit down, blends in seamlessly so hopefully when all this has gone off, it just prevents any, you know, any dust or moisture gathering in the divots and making it look like a, a unevenly painted floor, but it's actually just the dust. You get in there with a cloth, wipe the dust off, and there's like this bit here, look. That's just dust there. Wipe that out. Perfectly painted underneath. So the idea is to fill them in before we give it the final anti-slip top coat but I've got to go today I'm on uh, child watching duties so cameras going in the bag I'll leave a warning note on the door to make sure people don't walk straight across all of this because they're quite randomly dispersed and uh, we'll come in maybe tomorrow and see how it's gone on